Hi everybody, just wanted to um, use coronavirus outbreak to um, uh, help us understand some of the concepts in this course. So one of the things that, that will help is the normal curve, um, which we're going to cover uh, in chapter 6. And this is a normal curve where um, it, it's like it has a bell shape, um, where you know, about 68% of observations occur be within one standard deviation from the, the mean. The mean and the median are both right here in the middle. And about 95% of observations occur within two standard deviations of the mean or the median. And you'll see this um, uh, soon. So um, in epidemics, you get a, an approximate normal bell-shaped curve where basically this is a uh, disease of the H1N1 virus um, in, in the past and the, there's, here's dates at the bottom and you can see the kind of median date is about April the 25th and so about half of the um, cases occurred afterwards and half before April 25th and as you can see the, the cases the, the, the most cases were about at April 25th if, if that makes sense so it's approximately normal and this one is the Ebola virus um, from 2014 and as you can see um, these are the weeks of 2014 down here so uh, about week 45 is the median and the mean the, uh, and about half of the cases were before it half half of the cases were after it and again it kind of approximates that bell-shaped normal curve doesn't it see that so this is an example of the normal curve in uh, disease epidemics right and we can expect to see something similar with the coronavirus and you know it's at week 45 is the interesting week here because this is when the the world health organization and uh you know and the governments really start to get a handle on it and they they're really they're quarantining folks and they're providing treatment and um and that's when they they really the uh, number of cases starts to reduce and eventually um the disease kind of goes away so that's what we really hope to see happen with the coronavirus and my only thing is when are we going to do this i mean um i would advocate that we start quarantining right away no need to wait i mean here in the united states we've got it this is uh march 8th 2020 we've got over 300 cases maybe more and we've got about 15 deaths so the blue is cases and that that correlates with the numbers on the left here and the black is deaths and that's these numbers here so why not my, my point is why not you know start quarantining and and uh, cracking down on on travel and flights and public meetings and everything right away rather than waiting until we have a hundred thousand cases and then everybody cries out for a solution so comparing that with China, who's had uh, the most so far, and they have put a quarantine uh, plan into place. So they got to about, um, was it about 60,000 cases or so. And then their quarantine plan really started to pay off. And they were able to keep the cases uh, below 80, about 80,000. And with a little over 3,000 deaths. And of course, those numbers may be wrong. Governments uh, get embarrassed when they don't deal with these things well. So, But but hopefully, they're not lying to us too much. And if we divide 3,000 by 80,000, we can see the percentage of people infected who died. So it's about 3.75%, about 4%. As we saw in the previous video, mostly affects... Uh, older folks and folks with, with poor immune systems are particularly at risk. Younger, not so uh, much. So in the previous video, we saw if you're under 40, you have about a 0.2% chance of dying. And if you're like over 80, you've got like a 14% chance of dying. So way more. Um, and here's some more countries. South Korea has a quarantine plan. And as you can see, this is blue again is their cases and the black is their deaths. And, and you can see that it, it spiked. Um, here just uh, at the end of February and since their quarantine plan they really seem to take care of it um, Iran um, is starting out and and uh, and um, I, I don't know how they're gonna do um, but like let's have a look at the um, percentage of people who have died in South Korea so we have about 45 
deaths, it looks like, and about six and a half, so let's say 7,000 cases. So we'll just do um, 45 over 7,000. Let's see what we get. So South Korea, it's it's 0.6 percent death rate. So less than 1% death rate in South Korea, but as we saw, almost a 4% death rate in China. So that will tell you the difference in, um, you know, the, the health system, better healthcare system. Um, South Korea is a richer country per person, of course, and they probably have a much better, sure have a much better health system than China. Um, and, and also, you know, the, the general health of the population, um, right? So if, if you're less healthy population, more likely to die from a, from a virus. Anyway, so that's that. Here's Germany um, doing pretty well. They've got about 700 cases, but zero deaths. So they're they're really taking care of their folks. Anyone who's got it so far in Germany has survived. Italy reported, uh, this is again uh, March 8, uh, 6,000 cases and uh, almost over 200 deaths. So let's call that two. Let's say that's 230. So 230 over 6,000. What does that give us? So it looks like about a 4% death rate. But hold on a second because just today, Newsweek, it says the coronavirus update in Italy, we've actually got 106,000 cases, not 6,000. So that totally throws these numbers off, doesn't it? So if you've got 200 and uh, 30 deaths over um, 106,000 cases. Now that puts them uh, back even better than South Korea. Korea a 0.2 percent death rate for for compared to number of cases. So you know again would reflect on how their healthcare system is doing. And so where are we at? Uh, so this is a, a map of the world with coronavirus cases around the world. And uh, yeah, that's just a what update I want to, to show you to show how um, there's the, the again just to, to recap the concepts that correlate with coronavirus that 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 uh, come up with coronavirus are the the normal curve, um, and then we looked at linear and exponential functions and how sometimes you actually need a, this logistic function is is a is a good one for modeling uh, epidemics and other things, and um, also correlation. Um, the, you can see how we've got China, the blue is the cases of coronavirus in China, the black is the deaths, and you can see how these lines are right beside each other. As one goes up, the other goes up. So these are definitely correlated. And not only that, but they're caused. The, the cases are, you know, the, there's a causation um, factor here. I mean, if you get coronavirus, you then have a chance of dying from it, right? So you're not going to die from a coronavirus if you haven't got it first. So, so we say that that the cases and deaths are correlated, but they're also there's a causation relationship as well, right? Because the cases cause the deaths, so to speak, right? Deaths don't cause cases; cases cause deaths, right? So that's what we'd say, and um, we'll be looking at that too. Okay, so stay safe out there and let me know if you have any questions.